you doing? Welcome to live stream number 68. Today is, what is today? Tuesday. It is October 3rd, 2017. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join today's live stream. Today's topic is settings and preferences you should know about. Um, way long ago on the live stream, we talked something about uh, settings and preferences. Uh, but you know what? I get few quite a few emails of people who's kind of like asking me what kind of settings I'm running with. Um, and you know, there is kind of like those hidden, I don't know if you want to call them gems, but there's those hidden things in there that, um, you know, unless you stumble over it, then you maybe don't know about it. So that's what we're going to attack today. As always, if you look down in the description area, you will find uh, my email address lars.christensenerodotis.com. Absolutely more than welcome to uh, send me any uh, future topics you would like to see here on the live stream. I can see we already got a bunch of people in here. It's absolutely awesome. Got people from absolutely anywhere. Thank you so much, guys, for taking the time uh, out of your busy day to join the live stream. And if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, the recording, hey, thank you for doing that. Uh, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it. We'll hit that subscribe button there. And of course, thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on if you like the topic or if you don't. All right, guys, let's jump into uh, Fusion and uh, just kind of like go through some of these settings that I think that we definitely should uh, know about. And any of you guys, um, if you have anything to add, put it down in the comment area, right? Like, uh, let's share the knowledge. So, I have lost my mouse. There it is. So, Fusion. Um, all right, I will start by turning off the grid. <laughs> um, I reset my values back, and uh, one of the questions that I got from a few people is this grid. And this grid is, is kind of cool, actually. Um, it's not completely, uh, you know, just in your way. But you can control it down here on the button down here in the bottom. You have some different options. So... Um, you can actually go in and uh, kind of like lay out the grid. Uh, you can change some settings in here if you wanted to adapt depending on sizes or if you want it to be like a fixed uh, size in here. So you can kind of like put in here and, and kind of like break it up into uh, kind of like what you want. And you know what? If you are, if you're doing kind of like concept modeling, uh, trying to sketch something out, uh, grid is not a bad idea. But preferably what I normally do is I shut it off but i mean whatever kind of like floats your boat um so i wanted to start out with that just because that's a question i get quite often people install fusion 360 they get the grid and then they see that i don't use the grid so that's how i get rid of that right down there in the bottom let's go in and uh, look at some of the preferences so go and click your name go into preferences and you know I am not going to blame you if you never went in there and looked around. It's a little bit like a little daunting sometimes to try to go in and, and, and go through all the different settings. But you should know about a few of them. So, uh, you know, let's, uh, if it's late where you are and you're having a beer, let's go through this with a beer. If not, then let's just hold hands. So, first of all, I, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go in and, and say reset my my defaults uh, for you right here and hit apply. Because that's important to know that if you ever kind of like get to a point where you don't really know, you know, something is acting up a little bit and you have been in here messing around, hey, that could be a good problem. All right, I'm not gonna go through all the different ones because I don't think that you need to know about all these. If you wanna go deeper, come in here and play around. Of course, we got different languages. Um, I will only do this in English, I can tell you that. Um, then in here, this is an, a one I, th I definitely want to highlight. You can choose between uh, a couple of different uh, graphics um, drivers in here. There's a Direct X 11, Direct 9 11. And I think also if we go over to uh, graphics area over here, over on the tree over here, we were in general section, go over to the graphics area. Um, you will see over here, there's also uh, kind of like better performance versus better display. And then I'm just going to jump outside <laughs> this preferences for a second, because I'm going to show you something that um, probably I would imagine a lot of people have missed. If you go up, up here, we have our name. If you go next to it, um, it says help. In here, 
There are actually some pretty neat tools in here in that drop down. Uh, go in here and play around with it. There, um, there is a access out to the learning portal uh, and get it started portal. That can be nice for you guys to know about. You can access the forum from in here. The gallery is always cool to go in there. Then this one, a lot of you guys probably would, you know, people email me and ask me what is coming in Fusion. They're actually putting it right here on the road um, roadmap. But what I want to get down to is there is a graphic diagnostic section here and you can you can click on that and that will show you uh, what um, graphics cards you have. It will show you what kind of settings you have and it will show you what I just showed you before, like with better performance versus uh, better display uh, in here. So this kind of can give you some some feedback um, in here that you can use. So let's just go back into your preferences and talk a little bit about. So when I brought this up before, um, then you are probably looking for a good explanation about uh, DirectX 11, DirectX 9. I'm not a computer guy. <laughs> so I'll tell you what I know and then you know what I know. No. So when it, it's one of the cool things about Fusion is that it's you don't have to go out and buy a very expensive um graphics card so back in the day we well, back in the 90s the cad companies decided to use something called OpenGL, and i don't want to turn this into a graphics technical thing graphics companies decided to use a cad company decided to use something called OpenGL on graphics card uh kind of like about where the memory goes on the graphics card and then uh the gaming companies decided to use something else um, so for many, many years, if you had ever had to buy a CAD computer, you had to buy a very expensive graphics card that had this OpenGL uh, version. But Fusion is using DirectX uh, for their graphics driver. I mean, you can use gaming cards for Fusion, which is awesome. And that's where this DirectX 11 and 9 comes in. Really, as far as I know, and like I said, I don't know much, but 11 is a little bit... Well, maybe it's obvious, a little bit better, higher end than the 9, um, but it's kind of like a driver status. So if you do see graphics issues, um, play around with one of these uh, and kind of like see if that is working. And then, of course, so you can play around with this and see if anything changes. Um, and I'm actually not sure if it's going to read this right from your graphics card. That could be somebody add that in the comment. Um, but play around with that. And then I would say tweak around with better performance versus a uh, better display, what, what probably is, is pretty obvious. By the way, I also just wanted to, um, to and, and by the way, if we go back into where I was before and you go into this graphic diagnostic, down here, there is an option to, um, there's a limit effects to optimize performance, so you can check that, but we'll kind of like turn all this off and you can see if that's better. But also be aware of that there is a still performing issues and you can actually create a ticket that you still have some graphical issues. And that brings me to a point the other day. I, When I was doing my live stream the other day, Fusion 360 crashed on me. Did you see that? <laughs> um, yes, it happens, right? It's software. But uh, a couple of people sent me emails that that happens to them fairly often. That should not happen. So if you see on a regular basis that Fusion 360 is 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 acting up and you know that you are not running a, a computer from 1996 um but something that should be a little bit better you gotta you know reach out to support because that's not the way it should work uh i will say i'm running as you know i'm running fusion all day long and i'm running it on a mac and i'm running it on my windows 7 and i really don't see these crashes very often so i just wanted to say that all right now i'm start rambling on crashes and graphics cards so um, beware of that. Um, offline cast time period. So I've talked about this before also. So the cool thing about Fusion is that it is storing all your files uh, locally and on the cloud, if you uh, remember correctly. Well, um, in here you can choose how many days is saved locally. So um, after 60 days, if you have not opened up a specific file, uh, it will be deleted on your hard drive, but it will still be up in the cloud. So you can still access it up there as long as you're connected to the internet. 
Um, you know, I played around with this at one point I had it at 90 because I was thinking, oh, that's three months. That's pretty good. Then I actually did start because stupid partition on my computer. <laughs> I did start running into issues with storage and now at default is 60. Uh, you know, if you never really go offline and need to work, 30 might be okay. Um, another thing that you should have is this, okay. Um, is um, automatic recovery save time. So it saves every uh, five minutes um, just to get the, the latest version. However, another cool thing about Fusion is that if Fusion should crash, uh, it has an automatic recovery uh, happening. Um, it, the last thing it does before it crashes is it actually saves. So it's actually smart enough to that. And you actually have... If you go in and you click up on your file up here, click the drop down, you actually have an option right here to recover documents. So if you ever seen Fusion crash or you shut it down like without letting it save, you've probably seen that this little pop-up box comes up in the middle of the screen saying, do you want to recover your files? And um, you know, many times I'm just like, yeah, whatever, get away, right? But that same checkbox that you see coming up is actually sitting, you can access that right underneath the file. So that is definitely uh, helpful. See, so you click on it, it comes up. This is the box that always pops up. So just be aware of that Fusion will actually, when it, uh, if it crashes, what should not happen, it will um, it will automatically save. And that pop-up is what, where it comes from. Some of the things that I normally have checked, tool tips, you know, you can choose what you want to show, not show. This is important if you are coming from another software to use Fusion, there are actually some of the, the settings that can be defaulted back to, uh, to the pan, zoom, and orbit shortcut. And if you're a little bit unsure about how all this pan, zoom, orbit, we did a live stream not too long ago about that. Um, that is really all that I want to talk about. On, on the general page. The API, I am going scripting and programming. That is not for Lars. He's gonna pass right by that. If you do this stuff, you're smarter than me. Um, in the design in here, you have a couple of, of options you probably should know about. Um, you can set your design history to either capture or do not capture. So we talked uh, earlier in the live streams about parametric versus direct editing. Your default workspace, you can set that up in here. Um, one that uh, is fairly new in here is the last one on here, Auto Hide Sketch on Feature Creation. Um, and if you ever have gone in to create a sketch um, and you maybe created some different kind of entities and you decided to use one to extrude up like this, you will see the uh, the sketch goes off when you click OK. It's kind of like consumed in here, but it's getting automatically turned off. So if you wanted to use the next one, the sketch, you have to go back in here, turn it on, hit Q if you wanted to extrude the other one. Well, this preference under your name, preferences, under design, this if you uncheck this, it will not turn the sketch off. So it will stay on. What is a nice checkbox? If you, um, I know some people bring in like uh, files for like extruding text and different things. So they maybe want to break that up. So that's a nice little feature. Um, not really doing anything in the render environment. If you're doing CAM, definitely I'll recommend uh, enable the cloud library. We did a live stream on that. I like to show my tool numbers um, and maybe this is something we should talk about on Fridays when we talk more about CAM. Um, and there's some different checkboxes uh, in here too. But that's, I definitely make sure that is checked and the cloud library should be on. In the drawing, you can choose what kind uh, of default you want to come from. So if you always are working in ISO, you know, for my European friends, um, why say inherit from design? when you can choose that it should just always come out with ISO to this sheet. So be aware that you have that option. Uh, simulation, we talked about simulation um, not long ago. That's in there. Same thing when it comes to the material. I think we're gonna be talking about some rendering very soon here. 
Uh, mass, not really worried about that. Graphics, not really worried too much. Well, the graphics we talked a little bit about. You can go in here and play around with some different uh, settings. Uh, so be aware of that. Um, I don't really play around with network either. Data collection and use. This here, I think, is important that every new user uh, just take two seconds and just, you know, read this. Um, and especially, you know, um, these different statements down here. I had one guy just commented the other day uh, on my YouTube channel about what my uh, thoughts are about storing, you know, that you're storing your CAD files uh, in the cloud. Uh, and uh, about having Autodesk people having access to your files. And that's one of the things if you go in and read in there, like, I can't go and look at your files. It's, it's your files. It, 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 it's under your login, all, the, all your, um, your kind of like, um, under your login, under your control, not under my control. Um, if you have certain settings, like these in here checked, uh, certain things that Autodesk can see, is for example, um, they can collect data as um, how many people are in the cam workspace. Uh, and not that you, Joe, are in the cam workspace, but like how many people are in the cam workspace at any given time versus in the drawing space. That's kind of like the information that uh, that is get collected. But read about that inside of the data collection in here. You know, that nobody should feel like that they, uh, that they have signed up for something that they didn't want it to. Um, unit and value display, that's another good one to probably just go in here, and just check what you have. Like my general precision would actually always be uh, five places was what I normally did. And the reason I used to do this, and this may be silly, um, is because I used to program CNC machines that would go to four decimals. So I always made my CAD go one more decibel. Hmm, yeah. Whatever it's worth, uh, you can also set in here for uh, your simulation. So you can you can kind of like uh, go in here and check that out. Um, you can set your default units. So what do you want to display for your design, for your cam, for your simulation? And then the last one in here uh, that's probably worth talking about is the preview. So um, we don't have like crazy uh, many like crazy beta kind of programs um, where like, <laughs> I want to use some of the other software that I used to use, uh, becoming a beta member is like, there's like a whole, you know, initiation, you got to go through, swear that you will never share anything. Um, what Fusion does is that down here in the preview section, you can go in here and uh, you can turn on the functions that you um, would like um, to, uh, to be part of. So you can go in here and turn on the different things like Eagle um, or, you know, these different things. Now they're kind of like in beta. So um, what um, the development team is saying is that, you know, it, it might be a few things in it that is not quite finalized. Uh, they're holding on to it until, you know, that they can say, all right, and give it the, the green go. Um, but that's the preview section you should know about on here. Set all your settings, hit apply, and hit OK. A uh, couple of other things that uh, you should know about if you're fairly new uh, inside of Fusion. Uh, this view cube up here, uh, you will see that I'm using that. I'm actually using it more and more on a, uh, on a regular basis, I think, to kind of like navigate uh, around. Um, but if you right click on it, uh, you can actually control like your view. And I normally work in perspective with auto. Uh, faces. So what this is, is actually a combination between the two other ones. And right now you're like, what are the two other ones? Um, orthographics is literally like looking at something straight on uh, without any like perspective. And if you, I know that some people just like me, English is not your, your first language. Perspective means if you're standing on a railroad track and you're looking down a railroad track, you know how it kind of like narrows? I'm doing it from my perspective. From yours, it's going to be wide and then it goes narrow. <laughs> um, that's perspective. So how we're looking at things if we're looking at it from, from a distance. Um, and that's what you can control um, in here. So if I switch this to perspective, if you look at these two blocks, 
you will see that they kind of like, you know how when you're looking at a house corner that these are kind of like longer. That's the difference between um, orthographics and uh, perspective. It may be easier if I look from the top down. You can kind of like see as I'm zooming in, we can see the side walls because we're kind of like looking from the top down. If I turn it into orthographics, then it's straight on. So what the heck does perspective with auto faces do? But it's kind of cool. It goes into perspective everywhere until you look straight at something. So if I go in and look at this right now, it will be the same as in perspective. But if I go straight on, then it turns into uh, the orthographics. So this is definitely my preferred kind of way. I like to see things in perspective when I'm kind of like, you know, roaming around. But when you go into, for example, start a new sketch, I want to look at an author. I don't want to see kind of like the side walls of this thing. So that's important. Uh, so that's definitely one of the, the settings that I play with. Other thing that I want to talk about quickly before we're going to wrap this up um, is like I pointed out before that the grid lines exist down here. Um, and, um, you know, you can turn those on and off. Another one that quite a few people, and then we came back on because I restored my defaults. Um, another thing that people sometimes send to me is they don't like this background, um, like this white background. So if you hit display settings, you can actually go in here and you can change your environment. So if you're not playing around with these different ones down here, you should definitely do that. So if I go to dark sky, then you see how it turns dark. I know a few people who uh, like uh, the Tranquility Blue as uh, their background. So that's a way that you can kind of like go in. And, and you know what? This is actually very nice. If you're sitting, um, if you're sitting working on a on, on drawing in CAD all day long, uh, I really change, I change these around a couple of times during the day just to kind of like give my eye something else to, uh, to uh, to look at so definitely that's down on the little TV screen down here you can uh, you can change that along with all the other things the last thing I want to leave you with that you need to know about is if you click the next one over here viewports I'm click on this and I select multiple uh, viewports it actually splits the screen up into four different sections um, in here so this is our isometric view this is from the top. See, when I clicked on it, see if I click on it, it will it will switch it to be orthographic from perspective. This is our, um, it will be our front view, and this will be our side view. So it just broke the screen into look from the from four different cameras. Now, if I whatever you will see, whatever I click, the screen highlights. So that's now the view that is active. So if I start spinning around here you will see that this is now moving around in that view. Um, and I can do the same thing. I can go in and work in here and start spinning uh, things around. And everything works in here like the view cubes. You can actually go in and, and work with this. Now, why do you want this? It's actually kind of nice if you're working, um, especially with like curved surfaces. So if you're ever working in the sculpting environment. But what we could do is if we started a sketch uh, right here now look at what happens around on this screen on this screen and this screen over here So if I right click here and say create a new sketch and I go in and just hit S and do my my Draw a little sketch here. You see how this sketch is being drawn over here, too if I hit Q and I click on to do a little cut the arrow actually appears uh, in the other view and now I got this box in the way now you will see that when I drag here, it actually resembles on all the different, all the different views, right? So be aware of um, that you can do this. This is really nice, like I said, if you're doing like um, sculpted surfaces or things like that. So now uh, we're looking from the top. I think this is making sense now. Uh, side, and we'll see over here. This is cut through. So this is a nice little trick to control right down here from uh, the viewport. You can go back to single view and boom, now you're back to uh, to where you were before. Okay, I said one, I said the last thing, but now I actually gotta show you one more thing. <laughs> and that was, do you see what I just did? I'm gonna go in and edit feature. I ended up moving this menu. Have you ever done that? Suddenly your menu is like in the center of the screen. You're like, 
you put it over here and then a little bit later you're like well now I actually wanted to go back if you hold down your left mouse button and you drag over towards the screen you will see a green line appears you see that green line appears and you can let go and it's gonna snap into place and now it's back into to where we were before it's actually the same thing if you're dragging and I've done that on a couple of live streams just by mistake it, you know it can happen anywhere that you're dragging uh, any kind of like um, icon off and then suddenly you're like man why do I get it back grab the little two lines here go back up and you will see the green line you can actually then you can't place this okay I thought maybe you could place it on the sides it doesn't do that that's a Windows thing um, so yeah just be uh, aware of that I hope that was helpful so for anything else you kind of like saw the settings that I'm kind of like running with and the things that I think that you should uh, be aware of uh, is in there this is definitely helpful if you're brand new right but if you also have been in the software for a little while and never really went through this you kind of like get set in your ways I hope that this was helpful we got 83 people in the live stream absolutely appreciate it thank you so much guys I'm gonna do what I normally gonna do I'm gonna end the recording so for you guys who are watching this on uh, YouTube as a recorded thank you so much for taking the time for you guys who are watching the live stream as always I'm gonna end the broadcast and jump in and say hi to everybody thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day and until tomorrow have an awesome awesome day